Welcome to the Get Over Yourself podcast. This is author and athlete Brad Kearns discovering ways to be healthy, fit, and happy in hectic, high-stress modern life. So let's slow down and take a deep breath, take a cold plunge, and expertly balance that competitive intensity with an appreciation of the journey. That's the theme of the show. Here we go. Only when we wake up and become conscious and do things like, say, there I go ruminating again, kind of looking at yourself from a distance from a spy camera in the corner of your room and saying, oh, there goes that guy ruminating again, and bring it back to present awareness. That's when your stress level goes down, your cortisol level goes down and gets regulated. And we know cortisol is the prominent fight or flight hormone, if you're not familiar. Uh, But when cortisol is regulated, that allows testosterone to have a fighting chance at becoming optimized. As I said at the outset, uh, less frequently than that, you depart from that positive feedback loop where if you're uh, more celibate than that, you have a, a lower rate than that, you're probably going to have not as good relationship connection and your testosterone level is going to decline. If you don't ejaculate once every seven days, if you attempt to do so more frequently, uh, you can experience lower testosterone levels. I know we have so much to worry about and be concerned about these days and EMF seems like just another thing on my long to-do list of ways to uh, protect against adverse health influences in the environment, but we don't want to turn a blind eye to it anymore. So the least you can do, as I mentioned, get a case for your phone. Talk on the speakerphone or with a wired um, uh, earbud rather than putting the giant device up next to your head or even uh, Bluetooth. I know it's not great, but the the true exposure is exponentially uh, worse the closer and closer you get to the device. This is Brad. I want to tell you about my life-changing acquisition of a personal home-use sauna. I have a 6x6 barrel sauna in my backyard, ready-made heat therapy, a fabulous unit from Almost Heaven. Check out their website. You can very affordably order your own sauna for installation in your backyard or garage and have a sauna experience, the fabulous health benefits accruing from exposure to hot temperatures. Get that sweat going. These are beautiful, traditional dry barrel saunas where you splash the water on the rocks, go in there and relax. It's become a social centerpiece at my home. People traveling from far and wide to come check out the barrel sauna, turn the dial or set the timer and walk in to 200 degrees in the Caribbean seas. For some reason, people like to come to the sauna more than my cold tub. Go figure. Check out almostheaven.com and their beautiful natural wood designs. And pretty soon, surprisingly affordable, you will be in the home sauna business. Welcome back. You know what we're talking about on this breather binge. It's lifestyle tips to optimize testosterone, anti-aging, vitality, virility, everything you need to be the best that you can be. And we've already covered so much, but there's so much more to talk about. Quick recap, part one, we talked about sleep. We talked about sprinting. Part two, we talked about strength training, cardiovascular training, and a little bit into diet. Part three, we talked about diet and supplements and avoiding the estrogenic influences in our environment. And now we are here to talk about one of the most important ones of all, a little bit esoteric and intangible, but we want to avoid negative stressors in life. These things can trash your tea like nothing else. So the negativity, the anxiety, the negative emotions, the unhealthy toxic relationship dynamics, the unhealthy thoughts. I had my man, Dr. Ron Sinha on the show talking about how FOMO, fear of missing out, he has quantified with actual metabolic consequences among his patient population in the affluent work place environment of California's Silicon Valley. So these people are making bank. They're living the good life. They're buying expensive stuff. They're taking their vacations. They're doing their thing, but they suffer from widespread condition of FOMO, fear of missing out because there's so much wealth surrounding them. There's always someone with more and better stuff. And it's turned into 
uh, adverse blood factors with uh, disease risk, uh, insulin resistance, things like that that are directly attributed to this high stress mentality and this high stress lifestyle. So let it go a little bit. Get over yourself, as they say on the podcast and try to manage stress effectively with an assortment of coping strategies. One of them, Dr. Ron mentions in regard to FOMO, is to catch yourself when you ruminate. Ruminate is the unhealthy uh, replaying of thoughts over and over in your head, whether they be about the past. Uh, Ruminating about the past uh, promotes depression, and ruminating about the future, playing scenarios over and over again in your head about what's going to happen in the future, produces, guess what? That's right, anxiety. So we want to get away from depression and anxiety-producing thoughts by calling them out, calling them for what they are. Dr. Ron asks you to go so far as to say, there I go, ruminating again, and trying to get a handle on it and tone it down, and instead, redirect your thoughts to sensations of gratitude. Be grateful for where you are and what you have today. It always could be worse, right? If you're listening to the show, it could be worse. So you want to get away from rumination and get into that mindfulness, uh, that wonderful mindfulness movement where we just try to remain calm, not react, it respond instead of react, put all those skills to work where, you know what, it's going to be okay. How's that? I know it's easier said than done, right? Uh, Especially when we operate from flawed subconscious behavior patterns that were programmed into us uh, during ages zero to seven in childhood. I listened to my breather show where I covered the great work of Dr. Bruce Lipton, author of the book Biology of Belief, where he uh, states with scientific validity that we're operating from flawed subconscious behavior patterns and reactivity 93 to 98% of the time in life. Only when we wake up and become conscious and do things like, say, there I go, ruminating again, kind of looking at yourself from a distance from a spy camera in the corner of your room and saying, oh, there goes that guy ruminating again and bring it back to present awareness. That's when your stress level goes down, your cortisol level goes down and gets regulated. And we know cortisol is the prominent fight or flight hormone, if you're not familiar. Uh, But when cortisol is regulated, that allows testosterone to have a fighting chance at becoming optimized. Cortisol and and testosterone antagonize each other. So high cortisol, high stress, high stress lifestyle will crush testosterone levels. Nothing you can eat or work out or sleep your way out of. All right. And John Gray talks so deeply about this in our wonderful shows together, where relationship dynamics have such a profound influence on your hormone levels because of the interplay between uh, romantic partners, male and female. So the female's goal is to nurture and boost her own estrogen levels so that she can be all the woman that she can be. And the male is to nurture and boost his own testosterone levels so that he can be all that he can be. And the partnership, the couple, will either compromise these goals or nurture and support them like nothing else, right? A female can make you feel uh, valued and and the hero in the story and the savior and the protector. And by doing so and sharing her appreciation, they will help you boost your testosterone like nothing else. And if you can't get there, if you feel nitpicked, second-guessed, and criticized, your testosterone will tank And instead, you will drift over to what John Gray calls your female dominance. And that is bad news for the male. So getting into uh, arguing, criticisms, nitpicking, all that kind of stuff will uh, spike estrogen in the male and suppress testosterone. Conversely, when the female is trying to uh, navigate through a life of tremendous expectations are placed on the female now because their natural nurturer, caretaker disposition, we're also asking them to be kick-ass peak performers in the workplace and handle all these matters and logistics and go, go, go all day and do it all and be all things to all people. That spikes their testosterone to an unhealthy extent where they suppress estrogen and then they're sort of incapable of receiving uh, love and support and, and nurturing from other people 
They're stuck on their male side and what John Gray calls the female CEO or the household CEO, where you just uh, kind of lose that soft touch that you have for each other and get stuck in uh, hormone de-optimization or hormone dysregulation. So my goodness, uh, the classic assignment for the male, the life-changing assignment that I got from John Gray and have thought about every single day since then was that he want he wants the male to be calm, cool, and collected in daily life. He wants you to think of yourself as a kung fu master. You're the calm, you're the calm in the storm. You're the measured one, the even keeled one, the emotionally regulated one. You're not going to get into and get argumentative and cranky and complainy and, and get sucked into drama and negative uh, relationship dynamics. You're going to keep your cool to the extent that this is directly from John Gray, quote, males do not speak when you have a negative emotional charge. Just swallow it, suck it up, be a man about it, go off and do testosterone-boosting activities rather than engage in destructive arguments, and then come back to the table refreshed and energized and nurturing that high testosterone man, which represents someone who's calm, cool, and collected. It's actually a misnomer when we think of the uh, the guy who cut you off in traffic and flipped you off and you yell out the window, you got too much testosterone, dude. That's actually someone who is testosterone deficient and estrogen estrogen dominant and getting too emotional because uh, estrogen is associated with emotionals. Females biological wiring is more emotional uh, than males, right? Not a criticism. It's just uh, being the best you can be and trying to keep things regulated, but especially males must not get out of that uh, calm, cool, collected default mindset. In fact, uh, he talks about the female's deepest biological drive is to feel safe and protected by her male partner, right? She wants you to be the hero and the protector. And the dominant male biological drive is to be that hero in the story and keep the female safe and protected. Unfortunately, as John Gray points out, in primal times, that was the physically stronger male protecting the 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 the, the partner and the clan from danger from uh, the predators that are lurking in the wilderness. Uh, today, that stuff has been neutralized. And so today, the female's main requirement, the most important thing that she needs to be protected from is your own anger, her partner's own anger. Dang, man, that's pretty heavy when you think about it, right? So protect the female from your own anger. The least you can do, the number one thing you can do before you can get started down the path to healthy relationship dynamics. And speaking of that, the next topic is sex and how sex, a healthy sex life can boost testosterone or trash it actually if you uh, uh, don't follow the rules, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. So first of all, uh, sexual frequency is a good thing helps you feel bonded, helps you feel connected. And it also creates a positive feedback loop where uh, high sexual frequency will promote high sexual desire. Uh, maybe people can relate to the opposite example. My friend Suzanne Sloshberg wrote a funny as heck book uh, called uh, 1001, uh, The True Story of 1001 Nights Without Sex, where she talks about a dry spell that she had in her 20s uh, with tremendous... Uh, uh, wittiness and self-reflection. And it's a great book. Uh, that, that might be the subtitle, actually. I forget the actual title, but you can find Suzanne Schlossberg's great work uh, talking about how a dry spell kind of uh, 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 begets uh, more dry spell, right? And then you lose interest, you get disenchanted with the dating scene, whatever's going on, where you kind of head away from being your best self as both a male and a female. So partnership, uh, a high sexual frequency is a fundamental element of a healthy uh, long-term relationship. And uh, some science is coming in here. Uh, some of these are quotes from uh, Ralph Teller's article and other resources that, that I've gathered. Some of John Gray stuff is leaking in here too. Uh, but uh, I think Teller wrote that German scientists found that having sex in the morning or simply having an erection in the morning causes your circulating testosterone to rise significantly. So, uh, frequent sex, great idea. 
and begets more frequent sex. Uh, but there is uh, something that John Gray talked about in the last show, and that is uh, if you have uh, the excess frequency, you can actually deplete testosterone. And this is sort of a, a thousands of years old Taoist philosophy that preserving ejaculation or moderating your ejaculation rate can uh, promote longevity and increased health and vitality. So they did a study in Japan. Uh, it was published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health, uh, discovering that after a seven-day period of uh, uh, refraining from ejaculation, male testosterone levels spiked to 145.7% of baseline. So 45% spike in testosterone, uh, pretty significant. And that was uh, measuring from one ejaculation and waiting seven days. Uh, there was no change in testosterone on days two through five. Uh, so this is where John Gray is getting his reference that once every seven days for a male, at least a middle-aged male, let's say from uh, 35 to 65 or whatever big group we can lump in, and the Taoists have a chart, so you can look this up if you're interested, uh, where by decade they want to recommend uh, ideal uh, uh, ejaculation frequency. And there's a difference between uh, orgasm and ejaculation. So getting into this uh uh, multi-orgasmic male. There's a book of that title. John Gray's promised to talk about this on our next podcast. Uh, but uh, being able to orgasm without ejaculating is a, a strong recommendation for the male to be able to preserve testosterone, not have that testosterone uh, decline that occurs after ejaculation. And that's been validated by science as well. So your testosterone spikes when you're uh, in the midst of sexual activity or about to have sex is also a huge spike in testosterone. John Gray referenced that on the first show. So the idea of having sex is going to spike your testosterone, getting into it, getting into the business, testosterone levels through the roof. And then as soon as you ejaculate, uh, you've given all you got and you have a long regeneration period ahead of you for testosterone. Not long, but I mean, uh, whatever uh, length that, depending on your health and your age, uh, you need to rebuild testosterone. John Gray goes so far as to say that the best idea for the male after ejaculating is to go away and leave the female. That's probably where we got the classic example of the man getting up to leave after he did his business as a, a general uh, human wired response because going away and taking time to yourself and engaging in problem solving or challenging activities that boost testosterone is the way to get it back as quickly and efficiently as possible. And we're going to get way more into this uh, in follow-up shows about John Gray's insights. But for here, uh, we're talking about this general idea that if you can essentially pinpoint your ejaculation frequency to once every seven days, that is the sweet spot to optimize testosterone levels. Uh, as I said at the outset, uh, less frequently than that, you depart from that positive feedback loop where if you're uh, more celibate than that, you have a, a lower rate than that, you're probably going to have um, uh, not as good relationship connection and your testosterone level is going to decline if you don't ejaculate once every seven days. If you attempt to do so more frequently, uh, you can experience... Uh, lower testosterone levels. Uh, these ideas have not gone over uh, super well with uh, people I've shared with in person. So um, a lot of people are calling bullshit on that. And uh, even some respected physicians that I've consulted with are challenging the thousands of year old Taoist message that uh, preserving your ejaculate is a way to longevity. Ah, very interesting. And I guess you can go see for yourself, but it's just uh, some ideas to consider. And probably you have some anecdotal experience yourself where uh, excess sexual activity can wear you out and uh, insufficient sexual activity can cause you to be frustrated and even uh, get into that uh, mindset of feeling disenchanted or disconnected from your partner, whether you're single, uh, disenchanted, disconnected if you have a partner. Okay. Now we get into, I guess you could call these the biohacks, the little strategies for enhancing testosterone. Um, and this is compiled from some of the stuff Ben talks about, as well as some of the stuff that I've delved into and integrated into my uh, daily lifestyle, especially cold exposure. Yeah, some good research there showing that cold exposure can help boost testosterone production. 
Hey, ever wonder why the balls are hanging in a very thin sack, dangling around outside your body? It's so the testicles don't get too warm because that will compromise healthy testosterone production. That's why they tell would-be fathers to stay out of the jacuzzi and stay out of the sauna when they're trying to conceive. Okay, so if you go all the way into uh, a chest freeze or cold plunge or uh, use ice packs to cool down your testicles, especially after uh, high temperature workouts where your body temperature is elevated, this can be an actual legit strategy. Okay, so more thumbs up for the uh, cold exposure crowd and the chest freezer cold plunge. Love it in there, man. Get those things cooled off. Also, the red light therapy in a similar refrain, uh, stimulating the mitochondrial production and helping you more efficiently clear waste products out of the cells uh, has tremendous scientific research behind it. I did a whole show with Scott Nelson, founder of Juve, so you can learn more about red light exposure therapy. Uh, you want it to have it at the proper wavelength. So we have um, red and near infrared light spectrums, and that's what these wonderful machines are emitting, uh, the ideal spectrum of the different kinds of red light that science has shown to be really valuable. So you can check out um, uh, juve.com, J-O-O-V-V, -V, and learn more about the science there. Yes, they're selling products too, but they also have a ton of good scientific research and explanation for how these products work. So I love my Juve unit. I hang it off my door. It's a large, full-body one. So I'm definitely uh, uh, exposing the bare testicles to that red light every single day. I also have a handheld device that I use for traveling or for pinpoint accuracy on the certain areas of my body that I'm interested in. And of course, these have also been used. The red light therapy has been used in beauty salons uh, to help... Uh, against wrinkles with great success, great support. And that's because they're helping with collagen produ production in the skin. Uh, so in improving your, uh, your, your wrinkle situation when you get uh, red light treatments. I was even in Honolulu, Hawaii and walked by a storefront that was a red light uh, therapy center where you could go in and pay for some red light exposure. So when you're talking about a membership where you're doing 30, 40 bucks a pop, uh, spending a grand on a really nice juve light uh, doesn't seem so bad. So yeah, go check out that whole scene. I'm a big fan. It's pre pretty cool and um, feels good, man. Stand in front of the red light. I got my laptop set up right next to it so I don't have to uh, lose productivity while I'm uh, naked standing there uh, getting getting all the red light absorbed uh, both on the surface and then the uh, more penetrating waves of the two different light wavelengths. Okay, so and then we talked about the cold exposure uh, can have that benefits to testosterone among all the other uh, hormonal benefits it has. And then also probably on this list and even cheaper than buying a cold tub or a, a juve light is sun exposure. So I talked about that in the previous show, but uh, nice research uh, reveals that vitamin D increases the androgen receptor activity. The same thing that doing the compound uh, lower body strength training sessions do is uh, bumping up those androgen receptors so that the testosterone in your bloodstream will have some place to go. Uh, ben Greenfield gets into some uh, way more crazy stuff, so I'm going to put these on the uh, on the crazy list and the other ones on the reasonable, possibly consider list. But hey, if you want to go deep, uh, listen to Ben, because no one goes deeper than that guy, and I mean no one. So he was talking about uh, using electro muscle stimulation on your leg muscles, the same ones that are rich with androgen receptors, and that'll help upregulate androgen receptors uh, without uh, necessarily having to do the workout. I would probably say, just go do the workout, man. Go do some squats. But if you want to up your game in that level, you can get these uh, inexpensive units that they use in the healing centers, right? If you have a sore muscle and you get the pulse machine, you put the pads on, it causes the muscle to twitch. Uh, there's also pulse electromagnetic therapy, so this is a low-frequency uh, EMF, unlike the harmful EMF that comes from your uh, your cell phone or your Wi-Fi router. Uh, this is sort of uh, the idea is to counter the adverse effects of these electromagnetic fields that we're exposed to in daily life. 
And uh, mounting research is showing this stuff is no joke, especially the new 5G technology that is extremely destructive to human cellular health. Listen to some shows from Dr. Joe Mercola, one of the most respected resources in the alternative health scene. And he is a huge uh, advocate for uh, EMF uh, exposure danger and, you know, taking taking opportunities to uh, to mitigate that. Same with my show with Brian Hoyer. He gets deep into the science and they have meters to show the negative effects of this stuff. So you might consider things like uh, pulse electromagnetic therapy, uh, even doing something as simple as putting your cell phone into a nice case. I love the OtterBox case and um, that actually cuts it down a little bit because it's encased. All right. So thumbs up for OtterBox. Uh, another thing that Ben was doing, which is interesting to me, uh, he's younger than I am. Uh, but, you know, here in the 55 plus category, uh, you start to open your mind to all possibilities. I never once thought about introducing uh, a foreign agent into my body my entire life, especially when I was an athlete. Uh, you know, you're, you're getting uh, drug testing and all that. But I always thought that the straight and uh, clean path was always going to uh, have more benefit than the uh, path of introducing outside injection or agent that was overriding your normal genetic function. Uh, until that point comes when, I don't know, when that day comes when I'm feeling old and my blood levels are down, uh, maybe that's when I'm going to cross over into the, quote, dark side and look at hormone replacement therapy, which is so popular uh, in today's world. So uh, open-minded about everything. And uh, Ben, the open-minded guy, is actually experimenting with microdosing uh, testosterone applying right to his balls uh, in the morning and the evening with a cream, but a very small dose as opposed to the injections that deliver a lot of testosterone when you're on an official hormone replacement regimen. And so his idea here of doing morning and evening is that uh, compares to the uh, uh, the natural uh, cycles of testosterone where your body is uh, you know, spiking higher in the morning and the evening. And he's seeing how that works. Uh, I've talked to a few of my peers that are extreme health enthusiasts, athletic types that have dabbled in uh, testosterone replacement, and they uh, exclaim that they didn't really notice much uh, effect. And so probably if you're already doing a lot of healthy things, eating healthy, honoring all the lists from all these shows. Um, there is probably no magic bullet. And if there is, for example, if you were to uh, put high doses into your body, as seen in the bodybuilding community and, and the, the strength and power sports where they're abusing uh, these anabolic agents, of course, you're going to have massive, massive uh, uh, side effects and negative repercussions. So do the best you can do. And uh, we'll check back later in 10 years or 15 or whatever when you start to um, uh, look elsewhere when you're doing everything you can do and still not good enough, I guess, would be my, my take on that right now. Okay, so that brings us to we're getting, uh, we're getting close to um, the end here of this four-part awesome series. Uh, but here's a whole list of things uh, to avoid. So mistakes that can really screw up your testosterone production. And we'll just summarize because some of this stuff we've talked about, but I want to hit you with um, some don'ts here to frame the discussion of all the good things to do. Uh, so number one is those plastics. That's so easy to get rid of those. And uh, talking from a guy who thought he was healthy and was just so alarmed to see plastic residue in my bloodstream is kind of a scary thought. So get rid of plastics touching your food and drink. Next, electromagnetic fields. Ah, I know we have so much to worry about and be concerned about these days. And EMF seems like just another thing on my long to-do list of ways to uh, protect against adverse health influences in the environment. But we don't want to turn a blind eye to it anymore. So the least you can do, as I mentioned, get a case for your phone. Talk on the speakerphone or with a wired... Um, uh, earbud rather than putting the giant device up next to your head or even uh, Bluetooth. I know it's not great, but the the true exposure is exponentially uh, worse the closer and closer you get to the device. So if you're talking on a phone right up to your ear and that's your habit, you can change that to something that's a little bit less offensive. Uh, same with uh, sleeping with your head right next to 
uh, your Wi-Fi router for the entire house. Let's take some mitigation opportunities here and at least, uh, you know, create a bedroom that's a little bit cleaner than just complete oblivion to the effects of Wi-Fi and EMF. Okay, number three is that chronic exercise. Oh my gosh, nothing can sabotage your progress, destroy your tea more than overdoing it on the exercise scene. Go look on my blog uh, where I talk about doubling my testosterone. It's a good, happy ending. But the first part of it where I was locked into that chronic exercise pattern and trashed my tea to the point where I was clinically low, uh, that's some bad news. Um, some interesting commentary from Ben Greenfield here, because as you know, he's been on the extreme athletic scene, doing Ironmans, doing the, the crazy obstacle and Spartan race stuff. Uh, and he says, multi-sport, ultras, CrossFit, Spartan race, obstacle race, concurrent strength and endurance workouts. Most of this flies in the face of building testosterone. I competed in Ironmans for 10 years, and that was the lowest my testosterone ever was. I saw a steep rise in my own blood testosterone values after I quit racing Ironman. Okay, Brad Kearns here talking too. Uh, when I was a, a, a professional triathlete from the ages of 20 to 30 in my peak testosterone, peak hormonal function years, I routinely delivered blood values uh, ranging from 200 to 300 on the serum testosterone scale, which uh, generally uh, has the, the normal range is 200 to 1,000. And again, normal, uh, nothing impressive about normal in today's uh, day and age. So we want to be hanging out on the high end of the range rather than the low end. So I was routinely on the low end uh, due to the extreme nature of my training, the exhaustive nature of my day-to-day -day workouts and jet travel all over the world. Uh, now in my 50s, I'm starting to measure it more and more, I routinely fall uh, in the 600 to 850 range. So, you know, quadrupling my testosterone after aging 30 years can tell you just how bad uh, things, things are for the uh, extreme athlete. Next on the list, is prolonged periods of stillness. Bad deal so many ways. One of them is that marked increase in insulin resistance you get from being still for as little as 20 minutes. So we want to get up and move around, live an active lifestyle, find ways to move more throughout daily life. That's going to optimize your hormone function. Another adverse effect of sitting around too much is your balls get warm. I remember the MMA fighter, the classic interview quote that he gave to Joe Rogan after winning the heavyweight title of the world. This guy, Derek Lewis, one of the greatest clips you can find on YouTube. Uh, so look it up. He um, finishes the fight, beats the guy, and then uh, proceeds to uh, take off his fighting shorts and stand there in the ring in his underwear. So Rogan, of course, uh, being the comedian at heart, as well as the announcer for MMA, uh, he, he gets the mic up and he says, uh, Derek, why'd you take your pants off? And Derek said, my balls got hot. <laughs> now there's, there's a real athlete for you, man. So don't get your balls hot. Get up and move around. Next is eating too frequently, snacking too frequently. Uh, remember that you're insulin will spike when you eat anything. You'll shut off fat burning and spike insulin, even if you eat a high fat snack. So insulin's produced in response to any calorie consumption. And when you're spiking insulin, even a little bit with even with a little snack here, a little snack there all day long, that's going to have an adverse effect on your circulating testosterone. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, just proposing on the list here, excess ejaculation, honoring the ancient Taoist philosophy of preserving male essence. And oh, here's the charts, uh, the rates communicated in Taoist uh, scripture. So in your 30s, you're allowed to have three to four orgasms, three to four ejaculations a week. In your 40s, it goes down to two to three. In your 50s, once or twice a week. And in your 60s, once a week. Okay. There you go. Now you've been exposed to the Tao. You can decide for yourself. Uh, and then we go into the duh category of things not to do. And one of them is to uh, consume alcohol to excess because that will interfere with the uh, the, the, the source, the root uh, of testosterone, which is your testicles making the agent. Uh, alcohol interferes with all that, as well as smoking. Um, a study by the Boston University School of Medicine revealed, and I do mean revealed, that smokers have a decreased 
genital size. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is from the, uh, the article by Ralph Teller. Uh, more uh, quoting in the same way that smoking has been shown to damage the ability of the blood vessels in the lungs and heart to retain elasticity the vessels of the penis may be equally affected the blood vessels are much smaller the penis blood vessels are much smaller than those of the heart so constriction in this area may have relatively more severe consequences and finally uh, manage your excess body fat because obesity is a huge uh, factor in uh, trashing testosterone. A study uh, by Dr. Shayeb from University of Aberdeen, Scotland, uh, which was presented at European Society of Human Reproduction, says obese men had 60% more likelihood of low semen volume than men of regular weight, and also 40% more likelihood for sperm abnormalities. So if you're trying to get pregnant, especially get that excess weight off, if you're trying to boost testosterone, uh, same thing. All right. And so I guess one more thing to mention, uh, the best way to uh, measure it and track it. Uh, you can get a blood test now. I go to ultrahealthlabs.com. There's also directlabs.com, these online resources where you can go on, go shopping, add a blood test into your shopping cart. You don't have to make a doctor's appointment or go through all that red tape. And for a fraction of the normal prices that are charged in the uh, mainstream medical scene, you can go get your testosterone uh, with a quick and easy trip to the nearest lab in your area. They have blood draw labs where you walk in with your paperwork that you print out and they draw your blood. You go home, you sit by your computer, you wait about three days and your results are posted. So I like to go in there all the time and look how different uh, lifestyle behaviors and patterns in my life are affecting my testosterone levels. In fact, uh, I think I might've gamed the system one time because I went and did a sprint workout and then rode my bike right over to the blood draw lab to uh, measure my testosterone. And that uh, number was uh, skyrocketed from my previous uh, few tests. It was like 850 or something. I remember on that scale of 200 to 1,000. So at age 55, I was pretty stoked to see that my serum testosterone was up in the 95th uh, plus percentile. Uh, but maybe it was artificially raised in the aftermath of that sprint workout. Who cares? It's still high, right? So I want to go back again and again. Maybe I'll do another show uh, if I if I can go every day for two weeks and track all that. But it is something like 50 or 60 bucks to test uh, free testosterone and serum testosterone, which I would recommend. And you can also do a more comprehensive male hormone panel and comprehensive blood panel if you want to spend 100 or 200 bucks once in a while, at least once a year. Great idea. And another thing that uh, Ben Greenfield mentions you can do is to get a salivary panel on cortisol. That's the prominent stress hormone that's been mentioned uh, throughout this conversation, one that antagonizes testosterone. And uh, measuring cortisol at several times a day uh, with a saliva sample uh, will show you whether your uh, stress levels are dysregulated, which is associated with uh, suppressed testosterone function. So just kind of coming at it from the other side, uh, seeing if you're overly stressed and you can do something about that as well. Same with the uh, Dutch hormone panel, which is a urine panel where you give uh, uh, a few urine samples, I believe, and it tests your uh, metabolites of stress hormones and also androgenic hormones. So what you're excreting. So if you have high levels in your metabolites, maybe you're not using it efficiently, you're excreting it, and that can point to uh, problems that you can go try to solve. But uh, if you're not into that uh, self-quantification and uh, frequent testing, basically what you do is you uh, you know follow the path, man. Do your thing. Uh, honor the suggestions in the last four shows. So a really, really quick recap of everything we covered in the four shows. We covered sleep, optimizing sleep, especially in the middle of the night when the hormones come out to play. Uh, the exercise components are doing those high-intensity explosive sprint workouts, very short duration with long rest, uh, engaging in regular strength training, putting your body under resistance load, especially the compound lower body movements, the all-stars of deadlift and squat, getting that cardio in, uh, especially with your heart rate in the proper aerobic zone of 180 minus your age, uh, recovering properly, 
uh, nothing else can kill your hormones uh, than nothing worse than getting into a chronic pattern. Uh, and also added in this uh, area is doing uh, competitive and challenging things in life, not necessarily all fitness or athletics related. Uh, but again, video games counts here. Anything that gives you that little uh, burst of energy and inspiration that you're problem solving and trying to conquer your environment. Then we went into the diet. We talked about the superfoods like the organ meats, the pastured eggs, the oily cold water fish, the monounsaturated fats. Uh, talked a little bit about the role of carbohydrates and the experimentation that you can do if you're active and fit and you don't carry excess body fat or if you do carry excess body fat. Uh, a few different decision-making parameters there. We talked about this feast and famine idea that's getting more popular where when it's time to uh, uh, fast and give your body a rest, you do so when it's time to eat. Maybe take in a few extra carbohydrates to make sure that your uh, hormones are optimized and you're recovered and glycogen is restocked. Then we went into an assortment of supplements that might help, uh, starting first and foremost with the wonderful pure organ meat supplements that I'm standing behind with the male optimization formula with organs MoFo, and then uh, putting in some of the other popular ones that are easily uh, de deficient among many people, magnesium, zinc, vitamin D, creatine, and then a bunch of herbal supplements that are popular that you could consider if you want to go deeper. Uh, then the next section was avoiding the estrogenic influences in the environment, especially plastic touching your food or drink. Finding the all-natural skincare products like Dr. Bronner's and staying away from the high estrogenic foods, which are soy, corn, and flax most prominently. Then we talked about managing stress, especially the stress of your love relationship. Dr. John Gray, more there. Protect your female from your own anger, mofo. Okay, the next section was sex and sexual frequency, uh, saying that was a good thing, but it's possible to overdo it by the Taoist philosophy ideas. And once a week was uh, believed to be the sweet spot for optimal testosterone levels. And that was from a respected Japanese study. Then we had some of the uh, strategies, advanced strategies, the biohacks for boosting testosterone. We talked about red light therapy. We talked about cold exposure. And we talked about the less expensive one of getting adequate sun exposure and vitamin D production. Uh, we got into some of the more advanced stuff like microdosing and doing pulse electromagnetic fields. And then we went down the list of mistakes to avoid. Oh, man, get the thing right. Don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? Don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? Don't put on excess weight. Don't do chronic cardio. Get away from those EMFs. Get away from those plastics. Don't sit too much. Get out and move. And there you go. That wraps up a beautiful four-part series. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to the show. We would love your feedback at getoveryourselfpodcast at gmail.com. And we would also love if you could leave a rating and a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. I know it's a hassle. You have to go to desktop iTunes, click on the tab that says ratings and reviews, and then click to rate the show anywhere from five to five stars. And it really helps spread the word so more people can find the show and get over themselves, because they need to. Thanks for doing it.